This is the home of my grandparents, Mary Ellen and Edwin B. Henderson. They lived in this house from 1913 till 1965. We came across this box one day, and in that I saw papers, and I saw pictures, I saw letters, I saw printed materials uh, of my grandfather. I don't think they really understood how important it was until maybe they started to see the original writings and the yellow paper and, and understood what, what they had there. It was a lot more than just kind of like grandpa's stuff, you know? <laughs> this, these were important historical documents. This is a road map that my grandfather had left for me and to tell his story. But 30 years since his death, the public memory is basically forgotten. The task that we were faced with was resurrecting someone's history and accomplishments from the dead. Basketball was invented in the early 1890s by James Naismith. The people that he taught the game to taught the game to E.B. Henderson. So he is a direct link to James Naismith. The African Americans did not participate in the game until around 1904 when E.B. Henderson learned the game at Harvard, um, brought it back to Washington, D.C. In 1907, he attended the White YMCA with his future brother-in-law, and they were summarily uh, kicked out of the gymnasium while they were sat down to watch a game of basketball. And that inspired him, and probably angered him a little bit too, I would imagine. What he did was he started teaching the basketball at True Reformers Hall. And that was the first facility that, that had basketball for black men to play. There was a ballroom. It's very small, uh, but it had a high ceiling. You know, so passing and, and other, you wouldn't hit the ceiling necessarily if you threw the ball to somebody. For African Americans, pretty much the only place where they could play was the True Reformers Hall on U Street. E.B. Henderson decided that he would start a league of his own and a tournament by which a national title for African Americans would be established. He was a one-man band, not just in terms of playing, coaching, fundraising for basketball. This is the guy who gave black basketball structure, not just in the literal sense, but also in the historical context, really chronicled the origins of black basketball. Basketball was so much more than a game for Dr. Henderson. It's the story of an entire community. It's the story of a movement, a passion. E.B. Henderson saw sports and basketball in particular as a vehicle in which African Americans could gain access to Northern white colleges and debunk the myth of racial inferiority. It was a way to open the door to equality because the rules were the same. If you think about basketball beginning in Washington, D.C. on 12th Street, and then now you go a few blocks down the street and you have Verizon Center, where the best basketball players in the world play on a regular basis, almost all of whom are African-American, Geographically, it's a short distance. But historically, it's a huge leap.
when Ed and I would talk about his grandfather, he would get this wistful look in his eye and he'd say, you know, he really should be in the Basketball of Fame. I decided we're going to write up a nomination. We spent probably the better part of six weeks getting together this package. It turned out to be, I believe it was 138 pages. Thought for sure that the Hall of Fame would call us back and say, oh yeah, sure, that's great. Well, they didn't. So I called and talked with uh, one of the curators there, and he just unofficially said, nobody knows who he is. And at that point, Ed and I began to write articles, send packages out to everybody. <laughs> I wish I could say I tore it open and said, this must, this injustice must be, you know, avenged, but I didn't. And to their credit, they continued over the course of the next several years to really begin to continue pushing the narrative. We took a lot of time working on this. There were times that my family in Detroit were planning birthday parties and weddings, and most of the time we couldn't go because we were working on this. Every year we, we watch the uh, ceremony. Thinking, maybe this is the year, maybe this is the year. We were there, and of course, nothing happened. We kept waiting, and I tell you, more than once, I wonder, is it ever gonna happen? When you consider the true pioneers of the sport, that discussion should begin with Dr. James Naismith and then quickly shift to Dr. Edwin Bancroft, E.B. Henderson. This year, I got this tweet from David Aldrich saying, congratulations to E.B. Henderson for his induction into the Basketball Hall of Fame. What? And he called me and said, Nikki, guess what? Grandpa. He got into the Basketball Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, representing Dr. E.B. Henderson is his grandson, Edwin Henderson, and his wife, Nikki. It's very hard to bring people back to life, to kind of make this person whole in contemporary eyes. What Ed and Nikki did was give E.B. Henderson some dimension so it wasn't just someone on a page of a book. All that's happened, hopefully, will help to reacquaint the general public with the contributions of my grandfather and the work that he did to nurture the game at its infancy. This was not just important for them as a family, it was important for the history of basketball to know this and that E.B. Henderson deserved a real recognition of what he had accomplished. It wasn't just about the sport. It was really about a philosophy of life. It was about equality for all people, education for all people. That's what he spent his life doing.